Some Friday night football in the USL Championship. We come to you from Colorado Springs, Colorado in Widener Field as the Switchbacks play host to Oakland Roots SC. Tonight's match is presented by Centura Health with Ricky Lopez Espin. I'm Josh Eastern. Thanks so much for being with us. Now, both these teams coming into play tonight in opposite form, but both right in the thick of things in terms of the Western Conference standings coming in on fifth and sixth place to play here tonight. But looking at this Colorado Springs side, this is their first four game losing streak in the regular season since 2019. And the first thing Stephen Hogan tells us on our phone calls, we need to be better in the back. You need to stay more compact, keep things in front of him. Too many easy goals and giving sides opposite position, creativity, opportunities inside that 18-yard box. So again, if you're the home side for Colorado Springs switchback, it starts with that back line. How clinical can you be inside your 18-yard box? 17 goals on the year, not good enough for the home side here tonight, Josh. Well, these last four haven't been great for the team as a whole, but for Romario Williams, our keg one Modelo player to watch, he scored twice in those four games. And he's going to stay high. He's going to occupy the back line of the Oakland Roots, but the ability to get in around that 18-yard box and his movement to play off the shoulder, clinical finish. So if you're Stephen Hogan, you want him in around that 18-yard box, asking all sorts of questions of the Oakland Roots here tonight. So for Colorado Springs, it's been four straight losses, but on the other side for the Oakland Roots, it has been a really positive start to this season. And over these last four games, three wins. And you're talking to Noah Delgado, there's just the fluidity that they're playing with on the attacking phase, whether it's Pelias, Formella, Rodriguez, getting into very dangerous situations. They have quality on wide areas to survive service, so look for them to continue to grow on that confidence here on the road at Colorado Springs switchbacks. And for the Roots, of course, Johnny Rodriguez, he scored a bunch of dramatic and big goals in the past. This year, though, he is four. Off the heels, scoring against San Diego, he's going to be full of confidence. Just his movement, whether it's playing in the hole, whether it's stretching in behind, he's going to ask a lot of questions and very confident at the moment. He, it's, if you know Delgado, you want him in around that 18-yard box here tonight. So we are building you up to first kick tonight from Widener Fields. It is the switchbacks and it is the Roots. We'll have lineups in first kick coming up next from Widener Fields. Fox 21 local news because we are Southern Colorado. We want to highlight the best of Southern Colorado. Fox 21 and SoCo CW are launching our very own best of the best Southern Colorado campaign. And now it's your chance to nominate your favorite businesses. Scan the QR code on screen now to nominate your favorites in one of four regions for their chance to be named best of the best of Southern Colorado. Plus, you could win a $250 Visa gift card just for taking part. Let's hear it, Southern Colorado. Who is the best of the best? In Southern Colorado, you have to be ready for anything. Sometimes that involves making a really tough decision. Patagonia or North Face. We make the most out of a nice day. Hey, grab Aspen, Rocky, and Sierra. Let's go. And in Southern Colorado, we know it's all about the flavor. And as our cities grow, we hang on to our Western heritage. I'm just trying to hold on. Well, hold on tighter. I thought you were off this way. I'm getting off this way. This is how you get off. We are Southern Colorado. Hey, wait. What about me? We are Southern Colorado. Saturday during the summers was our get up and go to Monument Lake fishing. From a little hobby as an 11 year old kid, it's turned into quite a business. Our stories matter. If they're on the trails, if they're in the woods, if they're anywhere, I can be with them now. Bringing you the most local news. All of the people that are doing this type of agriculture are trying to do a better thing for society. We are Fox 21 and together we are Southern Colorado. Hi, I'm Scott Kilbury, host of Rocky Mountain Quiz Kids. We have 30 of the best and brightest schools from all across Southern Colorado competing for the top spot. Question is, who will come out on top? Watch Rocky Mountain Quiz Kids Sundays at 6.30. Sponsored by the Pikes Peak Library District. Burgers for the mind, tacos for the heart, and chili for the soul. We're Felipe's 109, home of the taco burger. Local flavors, family owned. Love, peace, green chili, y'all. Building you up to first kick. Today's player walkout is sponsored by Children's Hospital Colorado. It's the Switchbacks and Oakland Roots here at Widener Field. Great night for some action in the USL Championship. One of two games on this Friday night. Time to take a look at today's starting lineups. We'll start with Colorado Springs and 
Coach Stephen Hogan, it's presented by Phil Long. It's all about fluidity within these first 11. It can quickly turn into a four back. You're going to see Echeverria. He might come centrally. Skundrich might drop a little bit, bit deeper. But Enriquez, Williams, McGee, those three are going to stay high. And they're going to ask a lot of questions of the shape of Oak and Root. So you want to play attacking football. You want to get in behind of the opposition here for Stephen Hogan. And on the other side for Noah Delgado in Oakland, one big player not in the lineup tonight, Eduardo Rito. Now you have Pelias, he's going to be the one spearheading the attack for Mela Rodriguez underneath him. So that's going to be interesting. Rodriguez usually plays as a number nine. You have Matsoso and Gomez. So that relationship, how quickly can they get on the ball and play in their terms? Tamakas and Diaz providing the width and join the attack as they see fit. Noah Delgado starting 11 side, really talented. Plenty of attacking quality in that side. Of course, we. Focused on Johnny Rodriguez in our open. Four goals this year, tied for the most. You see Paul Blanchett in the shot there. Noah Delgado has been very pleased with his play as well. And the switchbacks, as we mentioned, they've been away from home over the last few weeks, but trying to get back to it here at home. That last home game against El Paso was a wild one. They ended up losing it. That was the first of their four losses. There's no time like the present to turn things around. That's the opportunity they will have here tonight. It's an Oakland team, as we mentioned, in very good form. And the opportunity to talk to Stephen Hogan and said, look, these next couple games at home, we need to take up maximum points. So again, how quickly can they start on this front foot in the first 10 to 15 minutes asking questions of Oakland Ruth? It's going to be interesting to see the relationship within the players, the different shapes that they transition in and out of. Big opportunity for Colorado Springs to right their wrongs, especially in front of the home faithful. We are just about set to go. In the black and blue, it is Colorado Springs. In all white, it is Oakland. Our referee tonight is Ricardo Fierro. Last set of the watch, there's the whistle. And away we go, the switchbacks and the roots for the first time here in 2023. As we mentioned, Colorado Springs, they went out east last week, a 2-1 loss against the Rowdies. Although the one goal they did score, Jairo Enriquez was good enough for goal of the week in the USL Championship, a very good goal. As this comes all the way to the end line, it's cut across, there's Enriquez! And it's blocked out of play, almost under 30 seconds. Could have been a dream start here for the home side, but this cutback ball is so efficient, especially in that final third. Beckford cuts it back. The back line of the Oakland Roots are retreating towards a goal line. Enriquez, the ability to get across this trailing run, hits it so well, but so unfortunate it doesn't end up in the back of the net. This corner kick brought to you by McDivitt Law Firm. We are in your corner. Chance to bring this into the box again. The shot is blocked and out for yet another McDivitt Law Firm corner kick. Josh, you just see that front three for the Colorado Springs. How attack-minded can they be in fluidity? Williams makes that near post run, opens up gaps for Henriquez to come around the corner. The in-swinger, this bouncing in, and Oakland able to get this away. A lot of defending here early on from the Roots. Not even 90 seconds gone. This is exactly the start, though, that Stephen Hogan would have wanted from his side. Lofted ball in. A chance for a second ball outside the box. It's moved out wide. Beckford. DeShane Beckford. Ambitious effort trying to come back to that near post. And his positioning is going to cause all sorts of problems for the Oakland Roots. Beckford likes to stay high and wide, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on Danny Barbier. Do I stay centrally with my back three, or do I go out and face up the tricky winger? So the rotations, positioning for this back line of the Oakland Roots needs to be spot on within the first 10 to 15 minutes here. For Oakland, last time out, a 2-0 win against San Diego. Johnny Rodriguez scoring one of those four goals that he has this season. Anwar Pelaez also getting his first goal. And Noah Delgado saying it was very good to get him on the score sheet. It's been a long time coming there for Pelaez, his first year with the club. We know how strikers are. They're just so streaky. You can see one ball hit the back of the net. The floodgates are going to open. Noah Delgado was very quick to point out that it was happy for the whole team. We saw how they celebrated, all went to the corner to support their striker because they know he can be an X factor. If he gets going, the attack players that Delgado has at his disposal, it's going to be a very 
dangerous attacking unit for the Roots. Enriquez able to win this off Rodriguez. And now the whistle comes. It will be a free kick going the way of the switchbacks. They're picking and choosing your times when to try to dribble out of pressure. Forces in a turnover. Henriquez does very well. You can just see coming through the backside of Rodriguez. And it's a very dangerous set piece here for the home side. The test, Paul Blanchet, and that back line of the roots. This free kick scoring opportunity brought to you by Underline, delivering gigabit fiber internet. Underline.com slash COS. Enriquez will deliver. Comes all the way through. I don't believe anybody got a touch on that. Just bounces straight out of play, and it's a goal kick. Those are situations that Stephen Hogan want to decide to be a bit more clinical and more ruthless, especially in their attacking 18. It's a good ball in from Enriquez. But just no one takes initiative to get on the end of it. It's a misconception between Segrist and Skundrich. Ball goes out for a goal kick. Finally, Oakland's getting a chance to get on the ball a little bit. Haven't really be able, been able to have it in these opening four minutes. Lanchette, long distribution. Not able to keep this alive. It's just high press for the switchbacks, causing all sorts of problems so far for the Oakland Roots. With the luxury, if you bring in Anwar Palai's ability to play direct into him to relieve some of the pressure. Play this down the line, and Riquez again can turn it up. Now he'll turn it right back. The cross coming in, looking for Williams through the middle. And pressure from the switchbacks really giving the Roots some trouble here. They're able to win it back quickly once again with Skundrich. Now Speedy Williams. Picking and choosing your times for the Oakland Roots. Went to play out of the back. No problem with that decision there from Neville Hackshaw to play direct to get in behind. So again, how clean can you be if you're the Oakland Roots playing out of your 18-yard box? So you don't want to give any sloppy turnovers against the switchback side. The ability to ask questions and put your side under a lot of pressure. It's a good ball there from Seacrest. Talk about the fluidity as Echevarria stays high and wide. That gives real estate for Segrist to come to the interior. No one steps up to engage him, pulls the trigger just a bit wide. It just takes a deflection off of Emmer Clemente. Should be a corner kick. Perhaps didn't see it. Again, you, you just see this press for the Colorado Springs switchbacks. So you need a bit movement on that front line if you're the Oakland Roots, whether it's for Mel and Rodriguez to drop down and to give a different support system to play through the lines. You know, Delgado, seven minutes in, it's been very sloppy playing out of the back in terms of possession for the visitors. Here's Memo Diaz. A lot of numbers crashing towards that 18-yard box. Changing the point of attack for the Oakland Roots. We talked about the pressure for the switchbacks, trying to squeeze you towards the sideline. So if you have the ability to go out the other way, there's going to be tons of real estate to operate in. You just saw it there with Memo Diaz on that far side.
Roots looking forward once again. And Enriquez is quickly able to win this back. It's good to be back, Ricky. <laughs> Seemed like a play that played to Karen two hats right here. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Segrist. Long switch of play. McGee trying to make something happen here, turning it back. Pretty good Jamaican flair to this switch back side. Now coming into the box again. Shot blocked down. Speedy Williams for Williams. And then it deflects into Blanchett's feet. And that's the end of that threat. It's almost a really fortunate bounce there for Colorado Springs. Again, it's just been a bit lackadaisical and pedestrian like for the visitors. The overloads for the switchbacks, whether it's on the wide areas or centrally. McGee, Beckford. As McGee stays wide, Beckford comes to that underlapping run, and then it's Beattie Williams stepping off his line. Blanchett just sends that all the way downfield. Maybe the thin air, you got to get used to it a little bit. Flies a little bit more. Lamenta steps forward, trying to start something here for Oakland and trying to see well, they can adjust without Eduardo Rito into the lineup here tonight. Out for personal reasons. Obviously a big player that has missed two goals, two assists for Rito this year. Second season with the Roots. Clementa not able to bring that in. Seems like Oakland just a little bit off here to start. Yeah, just not clean enough in terms of possession. Looking down at El Delgado, his hands up in the air. He knows the side could do better, especially on the heels of a very dominant performance against San Diego. He was very pleased with the way that they managed moments. So far has not been the case here 10 minutes in. The real switchbacks, and you see that they're on their heels, not really up to speed. You ask a question, and you go direct, and you do it very fast. Well, the thing about this losing streak for Colorado Springs is Great all ball. four of those losses have been by one goal. So they're in every game. They've been very competitive, just haven't quite been able to come out on the right foot. And this is going to be another corner kick. Stephen Hogan has to love this start from his side as he'll get another opportunity from that corner flag. This corner kick brought to you by McDivitt Law Firm. We are in your corner. Ability to pick out a pass from a deep line position. Speedy Williams, one of the best within the USL championship on this play there. Very dangerous set piece. This one flies in. Hackshaw is able to head this away. Switch backs. Start things again. Quah out wide. Bring this in fields for a run that isn't quite there from Williams or Beckford on that front line. Makes the wrong decision in the end. McGee does very well. His positioning him and Beckford, a very tricky, very good 1v1. So they like to isolate their opposition. Just kind of force it in that situation. Goes up for a goal kick with that man. Question marks all over his face. What's happening with his boys? Able to connect a couple passes. Akshaw surveying. He's looking to come forward here. Space to utilize. Peel for offside. Flag stays down. Formella. Here's Napo Masoso. Right through the middle, Johnny Rodriguez. Rodriguez scores! Something out of nothing for the Oakland Roots. The magic man, Johnny Rodriguez, is Johnny on the spot. And it's 1-0 Roots. When things aren't clicking on the attacking phase, you look to a player that's in form. We talked about him in the open, off the heels against San Diego, but look at his spacing. 12 yards between him, the next player picks up his head over the shoulder. No one steps out. Don't mind if I do, I pull the trigger. I close my hips. I send Herrera packing a kiss off the far post into the back of the net. What a brilliant individual play there from Johnny Rodriguez. The ability to pull up from distance. Hits it so clean, so flush. Oak and Roots stunned the switchbacks on the road. A 
look at that from Johnny Rodriguez. What a strike and maybe some blood as well on his jersey. He's going to need a new shirt. You won't mind. Just comes out of nothing, Josh. Simple little check over his shoulder. No one steps off that back line from the switchbacks. We talked about getting informed, scoring goals for fun. When you see the ball hit the back of the net as a striker, it's the best thing that can happen for your confidence. What a confident finish that was to get his fifth on the year. The first shot of the game for the Oakland Roots is the one that ends up in the back of the net. The five shots for the switchbacks, none on target. Until now, this one may be touched wide. No, it's straight out of play. Still nothing on target, but almost an immediate response. Overloading this wide areas once again. Gunges provides the width. That puts a lot of pressure on Memo Diaz. As Beckford uses the momentum against him. Brilliant little cutback. You see what he's trying to do. Squeak it into that near post. Just pulls it a bit too wide. And you have the relationship as Skundra stays high and wide. McGee stays centrally. Beckford has the ability to join those gaps as he sees fit. You have Speedy Williams pulling the strings. No better player. Johnny Rodriguez is now put on number 76. As there's the first shot on target. Blanchette spills it. And now he won't let his goalkeeper pick it up, and he clears it away. Oklahoma will get a throw in out of it. Clementa talking with his goalkeeper. I don't think either of them expected the ball to bounce that far away. They're good to go. They'll move on. They have the 1 0 lead. As we were saying, Johnny Rodriguez now wearing number 76. He got blood on his jersey, so he's number 76 from now on. But how about Johnny Rodriguez? Two goals in each of the last two seasons in the USL Championship. He's already scored five goals this year in just 10 appearances. The player down here for Oakland is the reason for the stoppage, and it looks like a yellow card will also be coming to Speedy Williams. The player that comes in through 5-1-0, Project 5-1-1 for the Oakland Roots. It's been a very good relationship between not so much so, so you just see it's a swooping motion that catches Gomez there. The left leg on the left ankle. Rash challenge for Speedy Williams. He knows better 60 minutes in on the card. So what does this look like in terms of his discipline? This caution is sponsored by Diverse's Health, Mental Health, and Well-Being for All. Remember to take a moment to breathe. This injury stoppage is also brought to you by Centura Health, as Gomez is being tended to. Gomez is able to get back to his feet. Josh, it's his first opportunity for the Oka Roots in their attacking half, but no one steps up. No one closes down the space. It's too pedestrian-like within this back line of the switchbacks, and that's something that Stephen Hogan told us. We haven't been ruthless. We haven't closed down opportunities. Johnny Rodriguez, what a confident finish that was, and he hits it into that far post. You know, Delgado, you have to be extremely pleased with how clinical and execution you can put on. One shot, one goal. It doesn't get much better than that. Now the interesting thing moving forward is something else Noah Delgado talked about, but this is coming forward again into the middle, and it's over the bar this time. Nearly a second for the Oakland Roots in their second venture forward. Just too simple. A ball over the top. Tamakas gets in between Enriquez and Segris. Just so fortunate, Pelais can't keep it underneath the crossbar. And now back the other way. 
Beckford on Barbier. The cross comes into the middle. Clementa just is able to get this away. Everything has been going the way of the switchbacks, except for two moments the other way. And now a player down once again for Oakland. And that looks to be Daniel Gomez once again. And you wonder if he is not going to be able to continue on here. Yeah, it's a hard challenge from Speedy Williams just moments ago. That left ankle, left calf area that he's grabbing. It's been such a good position for the Roots. Saw him play next to Joseph Nane. Now he's playing next to Napo Matzo. So the ability to play with different players around him and tendencies. So now what does this look like for Nel Delgado? We just see this left leg catches as he's planted. So he knows right away the pain that goes through that leg. This injury stoppage brought to you by Centura Health. Gomez not played a whole lot. The 23-year-old, this is just his fifth appearance of the season, but all of them have been starts. Player who started in Project 510 and then went to Cal State Stanislaus for his college soccer. Back here with the Roots. Now, this is when you lead on leadership. It'd be the switchbacks. 20 minutes in, you've been on the front foot. You've been the one asking questions, pushing the tempo. Goes back the other way, one shot into your back net, and now you're down at home. Stop, start and stop kind of game. So how do you get within the rhythm and the confidence back in your side? You're looking at a Speedy Williams already on a yellow card, but he's going to be the engine. He's going to be the player to connect that back to front from side to side and get Beckford, get Echeverria, Henriquez, Williams, and McKee in advanced positions. And it's something that we've talked about the switchbacks. Yes, they do very well to get into that final third, but again, it's how clinical can you be to make those opportunities count. Gomez now back on his feet. Now he's going to sit down again. Usually the second time you go down, that's when it's time to come off the field. But it looks like the stretcher is going to come out to help him off the field. Big number for stoppage time you'd expect now. I hope that Gomez is going to be okay. Gomez carried off here. Assume that would be the end of the night for the 23 year old. So we'll see where Delgado wants to go here. Like for like would be Joseph Nane. And that's exactly who it is. So an early substitution here for the Oakland Roots. Substitution is brought to you by the William J. Hibble Sports Medicine and Performance Center. Learn more at hibblecenter.org. Switchbacks trying to pick up right where they left off. Another foul. That's Rodriguez going down. What a bizarre start to this game. <laughs> a lot of adversity being thrown at these players. It's going to change the way that the Oak and Roots build out now. Joseph Donnie by trade likes to sit a bit deeper. Him and Matosa very similar the way that they like to play both defensive minded pivots. So one of them has to give. You're going to think it's going to be Napo to step up higher into that attacking third to provide the support to Formella and Rodriguez. So again, if you're the switchbacks and there's that little bit of confusion within the center part of the field for the roots, you have to take advantage of it. It's now twice on free kicks or set pieces, if you will, that Planchette has sent it 
over everybody's head. The switchbacks get right back on it past the midway point of this first half, although I'm expecting now that we'll get quite a bit of stoppage time at the end of the first 45. Enriquez is touched along. There's Williams. Now it's Segrist for Enriquez again. Gonna play this in behind. Williams able to get to that in front of Hackshop. He's muscled off the ball. And this is going to be a set piece. Free kick to Colorado Springs. But again, it's Emmer Clemente get, that gets pulled out of position. And then it's a run from Williams that plays in behind that puts a lot of pressure on Hacksaw. And then it's just too passive from the center back. Romario Williams does extremely well. As he's facing away from goal, there's no need for Hackshaw. Extension of the arm, the experience that Williams has, he's always going to go down. It's a very dangerous set piece now for the switchbacks. Underline free kick as this is taken all the way across and it will bounce off the corner flag and out for a throw in. I'm going for blackout on the bizarre <laughs> bingo card tonight. But again, Josh, it's just that movement on the front line for the switchbacks. As one comes deep, one has to go in behind and test the shape. I saw how aggressive Emmer Clemente is at stepping off his line, and that's something that Stephen, Ho Stephen Hogan is going to want to see a bit more throughout this match. And for the Oakland Roots, you have to understand you can't get drawn out too easily. You need to have the communication between Matsoso and Joseph Nana to drop down and do that duty so you can stay into your back three. Maybe a chance here for Oakland to break. When they've come forward, they've been dangerous. And deflect all the way into the corner, and this will be another corner kick upcoming. This corner kick brought to you by Pepsi. Pepsi, that's what I like. Chance for Diaz to swing this in. Here it comes, the heads go up, and it deflects off to the near side. Out for an Oakland throw-in. Laez has been close now a couple of times in this game. Formella is drifting in and easily taken there by Herrera. Here come the switchbacks looking for a response. It's been a very bright start. McGee loses it to the opposite number seven, Masoso. Touched out of play. Well, we asked Stephen Hogan this week about Tyreek McGee's first season here with Colorado Springs. Ten Jamaican caps in his career. He's spent the last few years in Belgium, but never really stuck. McGee trying to figure into this side once again and playing some meaningful minutes here from the start tonight. through the middle, Enriquez tries to touch this along. It was just a bit too heavy. Switchbacks nearly in once again, Rodriguez.
Apologies for the technical difficulties. About 28 minutes gone. Here come the roots forward again. Some contact there in the middle, and this, a yellow card coming once again. Just not happy. Mahoney in this back line, too big of gas between. Lies very good at holding up the ball, inviting pressure. So patient in the way that he just guides through the players to let players around him come in. You can just see beats Mahoney. Left leg, now he's on a yellow card to the center back for the switchbacks. Yellow card issued. It is a diverse health, mental health and well-being for all. Remember to take a moment to breathe. Here's McGee. Move it out wide for Segrist. Segrist looking for the ball in behind. Williams couldn't get there. And the flag was up for offside. And it's a good look here from Patrick Seacrest. Ball into that back line. Mari Williams just so good at playing off the shoulder of the op opposing center backs. Again, Joseph Nani and Napo Monsosa are getting caught out far too easily. That's the second time the switchback had just played a ball down the center location. You have to ask a center back to step up. Played long into the corner. Flag will come up once again, this time on Memo Diaz. Colorado Springs, it's similar characters, but that front line is almost entirely reworked. Of course, Haji Berry, Misha Galina in past years, but only 13 goals, this being their 13th game. It's not quite the same high-flying attack that we have seen in the past, but trying to get back to that. All right now, they just got to short things up at the back before they can look forward, it seems. It's just too easy for the Yoke and Roots to get in behind, whether it's Changing the point of attack we saw earlier in the first half. Kamakis getting in from a set piece has just lofted. Again, how compact can you be? And that's something that Stephen Hogan stressed to us, Josh. The back line, we're giving opportunities to each team, not stepping up. And you saw Johnny Rodriguez 25 yards in. Get in for Williams. He's holding things up. Enriquez is able to keep it. Such a shifty player. Enriquez, Ross comes in, bounces all the way through. It'll be collected over there on the far side by Beckford, who serves it back. It was too tall. Masoso just got enough on it to get it away. And now Rodriguez is in space. He'll slow things down. He has a couple of options in front of him. Elias drops it back. Rodriguez moves it across. Beckford getting tangled up there on the far side and actually comes away with it. The run is Williams through the middle. It never got to him. Hackshot cut it off. This game just wide open right now. Just end to end stuff you want for both sides, whether to play in the center of the park, just to put their foot on it, slow the thing down. The rhythm within the side, the oak and roots. Again, you need to have sloppy turnovers turning into attacking opportunities. Be a bit more cleaner in your build out phase. Here's Hack Shop. Some pressure there. And it's turned over quickly for Williams. Romario Williams goes down. And no whistle. Play on. It was surely an equalizer for Williams if he could have collected it. It just comes from the decision making or lack thereof. Or for Mello within this back line. Once again, the build up phase struggling for Nel Delgado side. Mario really, I think it's his first touch that just lets him down. 
Great ball in. Had that first touch out in front of you. You for sure have a look on goal. Here's Formel up. Looking for space on the far side. Skundrich closed it down. It'll be a throw into Oakland. And let's look back at this. How good is this for Speedy Williams to understand their space in behind? There is a little bit of a sh shoulder charge, but it goes down far too easy. Williams would have been very harsh. Saw the lack of that first touch and put it out in front of him. It holds himself up, so that gives two things. Paul, Paul Blanchett the ability to close down to step off his line, but also Clementa put pressure on the backside. Big opportunity for the switchbacks that goes begging. They've had a few really good opportunities, including in the opening 30 seconds. It's fair to say both games in the USL Championship have been pretty interesting right from the get-go tonight. And now another whistle as the goalkeeper is down, Paul Blanchett. Holding that right ankle or foot. He held back to his feet. And the argument for Blanchett is a follow through from Echeverria. Not much in that. There is a bit of contact. Gamesmanship from the keeper, trying to bleed the clock. Already up 1 0, no need to rush things, even though it is in the first half. Select the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship in many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.select-sport.com for the latest select products, specials, and more. Select the player's choice. Herrera will throw this back into play. Ten minutes plus what we expect to be quite a bit of stoppage time at the end of this first half. Here's McGee trying to turn the corner. This is touched out of play. Something that Noah Delgado's talked about is getting that second goal, and that's something that's going to be key moving forward with all the pressure that switchbacks are putting on. See if they can find some insurance and put some distance in between them and the opponent. This is given away, though, far too easily. Beckford just couldn't keep it as this runs out of play. Once again, once again, just comes from a sloppy turnover from Formella. Beckford just not clean enough in this final third. And that's been the theme for the switchbacks, especially in that final third, whether it's decision making or touches, just letting them down. Steps up in the center of the park. You just see the gaps between the lines for the switchbacks trying to play through the roots. Great run. Echeverria closed down by Hawkshaw. Those deep line runs from the center part of the field, so difficult to mark up. Echeverria has a very good feel for their play. And it's Beckford that makes a very good ball in. Give credit to the Oakland Roots defensively, closing down the space and doing it very quick. Just a bit over hit there from McGee. Good idea, but once again, it goes up and over. Just not clean enough in that final third for the home side. Chet will put this back into play.
Nasoso. Nane couldn't keep it. Haksha steps forward. Oh, look at that ball in behind. Nearly unlocking the switchbacks. But it was Diaz who just couldn't quite collect it. But what a fantastic ball this is from Hackshaw. Takes out 10 players for the switchbacks. Once again, it's that touch from Memo Diaz that just lets him down when he does well to close out in the space. And now the switchbacks are back again. Ackford trying to play that forward. And again, that is cleared away. When you have a center back that has the ability to pick up his head and break lines with this pass. Off the shoulder, you see Scungers gets caught ball watching. Dennis Mahoney, excuse me, Scungers that makes a recovery run to pick the pocket of Memo Diaz. Better first touch, it's an opportunity on goal. This corner kick brought to you by Pikes Peak National Bank. Bank well, be well, cheer loud as it's cleared away. Another misplaced pass. It's just been one missed touch, one missed pass. Small details right now for the switchbacks. They make a massive difference going forward, especially in both boxes. That's something that Stephen Hogan mentioned to us. We're giving opportunities and we're not taking ours. When I mean, that's a formula, you're, not, you're gonna drop points. You see the re recent run of form that the switchbacks are on. And it's gonna be a very important this next 45 plus minutes in this match. What's that reaction look like? Try to find one right before halftime. And cleared away for Mella. Trying to get onto this. Getting tangled up there with Skundrich. He was able to win it back. Now Beckford turns it in. Here's McGee. Skundrich motoring forward, and he just couldn't quite get there. Those are the spots that you want. McGee in off the shoulder of Joseph Nane and Matsoso. Great ball movement. And look at that space now. Quick pass looking for the run of Palaya as it's broken up. It should be a handball. Referee might just play advantage here. He is. Moved out wide. It's Williams. Romario Williams offside. And again, small details making a big difference. McGee's playing in the pocket once again. We just keep mentioning it, but so so. And Justin Nanda getting caught offside. We just see maybe by a yard. Williams offside, his first touch once again. He stays onside, lets him down, gives Emmer Clemente the ability to close down that space. Just not clean enough for the switchbacks in that final third. McGee's spacing has caused all sorts of problems for the Oakland Roots. I think if you're Noel Delgado, that's something you're going to try to correct in the locker room. As Joseph Nane says, Jaime Soso has to drop in. It's always had that seesaw effect between the two center pivots. Getting caught out time after time. Again, looking for that long ball over the top. Blanchette, he comes to claim it. Beckford making that run. Interesting when you look at this front line, Williams obviously the true number nine. Enriquez maybe more technical. Beckford's the guy who can stretch it in behind and get a little bit of everything with that front three. Very well balanced. They're just playing to the strengths of each other. It's a pull on that. The switchbacks are running into at the moment. That far side to Shane Beckford that stays high and wide as well. Creating overloads with Scunges coming around the corner, underlapping. Talent's never in question for the home side, but then how do you execute once you get into that final third? That is the question. Don't miss a minute of the action in 2023. Whether your club is on the road or at home, catch nearly every second of USL Championship action on ESPN Plus, the home of the USL La Liga, the Bundesliga, UFC, and more. Sign up today at plus.espn. Dot com. Always a great crowd here at Widener Field in Colorado Springs. Not eight through the lines. Quick passing. And now it's in behind. Shooting chance. Did this take an deflection out? It did. And it's going to be a corner kick up coming. Really good movement of passing for the roots. Just not eight to think of everything. And then this one touch ball from Rodriguez 
Just very confused by the angle that Skunders comes across. Polias does very well getting behind. There's no touch there, but now it's a very dangerous set piece for the Roots. This corner kick brought to you by Pepsi. Pepsi, that's what I like. As it comes in, heads go up. Three players go down, but the switchbacks able to carry this back the other way. Beckford trying to use that pace to turn the corner, and he has not a beat for it. Here's Beckford. Soso stepped in and can see the throw in. And now, after the play, a coming together with Beckford and Masoso, and the referee is something to think about here. And everybody needs to pull themselves down here. Rodriguez does not like what he saw. There's just no need for that if you're Beckford. Frustration. Give credit to Napo Matsoso. Long busting 60 yard run to deny this transition moment. Then there's no need for this. Through the backside, extension of the arm off the shoulder. Very dangerous. That's frustration at its finest from the winger. No need for that. This caution sponsored by Diverse's Health, Mental Health and Well Being for All. Remember to take a moment to breathe. into stoppage time here. Hearing there will be six minutes of stoppage time. It's brought to you by TikTok Shop. Gonna play this down the line. Across. Collected out of play. Williams. Enriquez, switch back, slowing it down here. Enriquez lets it roll through. Williams for Speedy Williams. Skandrich will go on the overlap. McGee. Williams. Enriquez it's from Mario Williams couldn't sort his feet and Clementa smashes it away. Seagrest, Lacroix. In this first half for Colorado Springs, similar to what has been happening the past few weeks. Comes out for Seagrest, he rolls this in, and the shot is saved by Blanchett. Enrique has a great chance to pull his team back level. One of the best five minutes of play for the switchbacks. Very patient, the way that they build up. Seagrest understands, as Romario Williams makes that deep lying run, it's gonna pull out Hawkshaw. That's gonna create that overload space in the center of the goal. It's a very difficult technique, Josh. The ball's coming over your left shoulder to open up your hips and find that far post. Fortunate enough for Paul Blanchett, it's right at him. Here's Speedy Williams. Has to chip it forward. Clemente gets it away. And Stephen Hogan talked about, he said, we've been digging ourselves in holes and then having to dig out of it. And it's a similar story here tonight. As we mentioned, all those losses have been by one goal. They've been in every game. But right now, the Roots trying to extend that lead out. The cross blocked down. Still a chance here for Oakland. And over the bar it goes. Another good run there. 
And just not quite happening for Memo Diaz. Switchbacks want to go quick with it. Segrist. Beckford in for Williams, who's offside again. That's got to be the third time. Just lack of discipline, lack of focus there from Williams. He's seeing the line. There's no need to break at that time. A bit too eager. Again, you just love to see the intent. The switchbacks trying to play in behind. It needs to be better. Midway through the minimum. More than midway through the minimum of six. I can do math. <laughs> Another foul. And Beckford has to be careful now. That was a high boot, and Diaz is down. Managing moments and emotions from Beckford's going to be very critical to keeping him on the field. The switchback side 11. No need to go into this challenge once again. Like you said, Josh, already on a yellow card, so it has to change the way that you play in your decision making in terms of the challenges that you go into. Studs are exposed. Memo Diaz comes in. Fair, not a lot of contact. Diaz makes the most of it, but again, no need to put yourself in that position if you're Beckford. Chance to break here. The final minute of this first half. I do think give you the switchbacks. If you can pull out one of the three center backs for the Oakland Roots, it's going to be tons of green grass to go in behind. But there needs to be a secondary movement. Whether it's Williams dropping in, McGee's getting in behind and testing the shape. What we've seen on a couple instances, Emmer Clement's a quick great ball there. This is chipped in behind. Barbier had it red. And this is out of play. This corner kick brought to you by McDivitt Law Firm. We are in your corner. We've seen Emmer Clement to step off his line in a number of instances. Enriquez, bit of a heavy touch, but is able to collect it. The borrowed time here. Trying to make something happen late on. It falls for Speedy Williams, and now it's dumped clear. Just waiting on the whistle now from the referee. And there it is. Oh, what a wild first 45 minutes. Back and forth we go, but it is the Oakland Roots through Johnny Rodriguez. They have the lead at halftime. Which is a terrific take from a player that is in form and is in confident and full of confidence at the moment for Noel Delgado. We need to clean things up in the defensive side. Too many times it's overloaded in wide areas, but also but so so non it That space needs to be a bit better. And for the switchbacks, you're doing very well getting into the final third. But what do you do once you get into the attacking phase? It needs to be cleaner. You need to be more expressive and more confident and more clinical. That's going to be the message for Stephen Hogan to his boys at the break here. Well, we have reached halftime here from Colorado Springs. What a first 45 minutes it has been from Widener Field. And it'll be another comeback effort for the switchbacks tonight. It is the Roots that lead by a goal to nil. Halftime is presented by Centura Health. for the mind, tacos for the heart, and chili for the soul. We're Felipe's 109, home of the Taco Burger. Local flavors, family owned, love, peace, green chili, y'all. 
Ready for a race? It all starts June 11th at 7 a.m. The Garden of the Gods 10-mile, 10K, and trail run. Bring your friends and family to the post-race expo. Enjoy the stunning scenery, vendor booths, food, and drinks. For event times, go to Garden10Mile.com. You know how much we like to highlight local on Loving Living Local. Now is your chance to nominate your favorite businesses for our Best of the Best Southern Colorado campaign. Scan the code on your screen now to nominate your favorite businesses in one of four regions for their chance to be named Best of the Best of Southern Colorado. Then on May 8th, voting begins. And the best part is you can win a $250 Visa gift card just for participating. Let's hear it, Southern Colorado. Who is the best of the best? We've all heard the phrase before, the mountains are calling. Well, these mountains are screaming. That's what gets me out here in the pool every day. They energize me, even when I'm not feeling it. In fact, they energize our whole family. We have done so much more outside in Colorado, hiking, biking, swimming, fishing, skiing, you name it, and we owe it to the mountains. They literally take your breath away. Watch Scott Kilberry on Fox 21 Local News, weeknights at 5, 6, 30, 9, and 10. In Southern Colorado, you have to be ready for anything. Sometimes that involves making a really tough decision. Patagonia or North Face. We make the most out of a nice day. Hey, grab Aspen, Rocky, and Sierra. Let's go. And in Southern Colorado, we know it's all about the flavor. And as our cities grow, we hang on to our Western heritage. I'm just trying to hold on. Well, hold on tighter. I thought you were off this way. I'm getting off this way. This is how you get off. We are Southern Colorado. Hey, wait. What about me? Halftime is brought to you by Centura Health, and it is the Oakland Roots who have a one goal to nil lead here at halftime. It'll have to be another comeback effort for the switchbacks if they want to avoid a fifth straight loss. Well, it's time for tonight's honorary healthcare professional of the match. It is Cecilia Trujillo, Director of Strategic HR Business Partner at Centura Health. Thank you for all you've done to help our community. The healthcare professional of the match is co-sponsored by Encore Electric, along with Olsen Plumbing and Heating. And what is to come for both of these teams? How about for the switchbacks first? They'll get three of the next five at home but they need to get things going in the right direction. And it starts with this next 45 minutes, and that's something that Stephen Hogan said, look, this next stretch of games is so important for the success of our season. You're welcome in Orange County that's struggling. Las Vegas Lights only one win on the year. So again, starting for this next 45 minutes, it needs to be three points after three points after three points. And that's the standard that Stephen Hogan wants from his side. Well, Orange County, Las Vegas, they've been struggling as of late. We'll see if they can get some points out of those next two. This is a stretch of three straight home games Stephen Hogan said it was very important. On the other side for Oakland, he got two out of the next three against Phoenix and then Pittsburgh in between there. It's not going to be easy. And it's not going to be easy. But again, for Noah Delgado, those six point swings against Phoenix Rising, there's a little bit of extra motivation in that game as Juan Garrett goes out to Phoenix Rising. So you know the players are going to be up for it. And then you go to Tampa Bay at the end of this stretch of the schedule. And that's going to be very interesting, hosting an Al Lang side. The Tampa Bay Rowdies are doing no wrong at the moment. So we are at halftime here from Colorado Springs. It is a beautiful night for some action on this Friday night. Halftime is brought to you by Centura Health. And through 45 minutes, this is switchbacks nil, and the Roots won. Are you ready? Ready for more of the game you love? Ready for more players and more teams? Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities. This is a different league. The USL Super League. Built for the future of women's soccer. Bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? Let's be honest. 
most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. Fox 21 local news because we are Southern Colorado. We want to highlight the best of Southern Colorado. Fox 21 and SoCo CW are launching our very own best of the best Southern Colorado campaign. And now it's your chance to nominate your favorite businesses. Scan the QR code on screen now to nominate your favorites in one of four regions for their chance to be named best of the best of Southern Colorado. Plus, you could win a $250 Visa gift card just for taking part. Let's hear it, Southern Colorado. Who is the best of the best? Halftime here from Colorado Springs is presented by Centura Health and is 1-0 the away side tonight. Oakland has that first goal in this game. We'll see what the second half brings. But first, news and notes from around the USL Championship. Of course, it is now Pride Month. You can go to uslchampionship.com slash news to learn more about the You Can Play. And then, of course, breaking ground on the new Indy 11 stadium. The pictures look incredible. That's going to be massive for the success of Indy 11, also for USL Championship, just to welcome 20,000 seat stadium. That's going to be a terrific hostile environment. And then you go down to the Open Cup, the Riverhounds going to TQL, and Birmingham hosting Inter Miami, a new look into yeah. Miami at Protective Stadium. That's going to be my cup set to pick. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> Well, those will be fun. Those are coming up next week on the 6th and the 7th. But what is to come this weekend? Plenty of good fixtures. What What do you see here? I'm looking at the Pittsburgh Riverhounds hosting Phoenix Rising. The Rising losing to Las Vegas. First win on the year for the Lights. Now the Riverhounds. Is there going to be a hangover? Obviously taking down MLS opposition at home. Going too loud and winning. So that's going to be an interesting one. And then the Tampa Bay Rowdies hosting Sac, Sac Republic. So that one's going to be very interesting. As Mark Briggs makes the cross-country trek, so those are my, the two that I have my eyes on. All right, we'll see what we get. San Antonio, San Diego going to be an interesting one out west as well. Power rankings, El Paso, it seems like they've kind of sneaked up on everybody. Although these last six games, it's been six wins after really slow start. I think you can say the same for Memphis 901 early in, in the season. Question marks all over those two organizations. But since that, Brian Clarehout's getting his boys playing and playing very dominant football. You see Sacramento, Tampa Bay, San Antonio, the teams that you would probably expect with Charleston Battery. As of late, a bit shaky. A 4-0 loss tonight. They had a red card inside of 30 seconds. Yeah, that's not, it's not the best for Ben Pierman and the Riverhounds and your Oakland Roots and the Loyal. Again, no complaints for this top 10. Well, we will see what we get here for the rest of the way from Colorado Springs. Oakland has the lead. The switchbacks looking for a comeback. We'll have highlights, stats in the second half coming up next. Southern Colorado. Saturday during the summers was our get up and go to Monument Lake fishing. From a little hobby as an 11-year-old kid, it's turned into quite a business. Our stories matter. If they're on the trails, if they're in the woods, if they're anywhere, I can be with them now. Bringing you the most local news. All of the people that are doing this type of agriculture are trying to do a better thing for society. We are Fox 21, and together we are Southern Colorado. I moved here about eight years ago to join the Fox 21 News team. I thought I'd only be here for a couple of years, but I absolutely fell in love with Southern Colorado. I also fell in love with a Pueblo boy when I was interviewing him about his food truck. Now we're married. We have this little girl, and my parents actually owned a restaurant in Arkansas, a catfish restaurant. So it's exciting that my daughter gets to grow up in a restaurant, too, in her daddy's kitchen in Pueblo. Yeah. Watch Taylor Bishop, weeknights at 5, 6, 30, 9, and 10. 
In Southern Colorado, you have to be ready for anything. Sometimes that involves making a really tough decision. Patagonia or North Face. We make the most out of a nice day. Hey, grab Aspen, Rocky, and Sierra. Let's go. And in Southern Colorado, we know it's all about the flavor. And as our cities grow, we hang on to our Western heritage. I'm just trying to hold on. Well, hold on tighter. I thought you were off this way. I'm getting off this way. This is how you get off. We are Southern Colorado. Hey, wait. What about me? Hi, I'm Scott Kilbury, host of Rocky Mountain Quiz Kids. We have 30 of the best and brightest schools from all across Southern Colorado competing for the top spot. Question is, who will come out on top? Watch Rocky Mountain Quiz Kids Sundays at 630, sponsored by the Pikes Peak Library District. Burgers for the mind, tacos for the heart, and chili for the soul. We're Felipe's 109, home of the taco burger. Local flavors, family owned, love, peace, green chili, y'all. Sun setting over the Rocky Mountains here in Colorado Springs. It is 1-0 in favor of the Oakland Roots as we get set for the second 45 minutes of action. Halftime is presented by Centura Health. Time to look back at that first 45 minutes with our halftime highlights and plenty of action right from the get-go in this one. We start in the first minute as these are brought to you by Broadmoor Cryptotherapy. And again, just the theme for the switchbacks is how clinical can you be inside that 18 yard buck? It's a brilliant ball in from Beckford as his back line's retreating. The run from Williams pulls out Clementa. Enriquez makes that trailing run just so unlucky. It doesn't go through to the goal. And then it would be more moments coming forward. Segris this time leading the charge. Okay, no one steps off his line. Patrick Segris, very active, joined into that final third, just pulls it a bit too wide. Again, you're going to see the lack of defensive shape from both sides. No one steps up, and Johnny Rodriguez makes them pay. The ability just to check his shoulder, whether it's Duke Lacroix, whether it's Patrick Segrist, no one closes down the space. John Rodriguez says, don't mind if I do. Hits it so well, two bounces off the deck, off the post, into the corner. Oakland Roots have their opening goal. It was almost an immediate response. This was a weird bounce. And then a moment of consternation between Clementa and Blanchett. Again, you want someone on the attacking phase, if you're the switchbacks, to follow up. You have a bit of anticipation that falls into the back line. A bit of confusion between Clementa and Blanchett, but no harm done for the Oakland Roots. And this was terrific. Quick passing. Pelias just gets off the corner of Skundridge. There's a little bit of a touch that's to be said. I just think Pelias miss hits it, goes up and over. But the Roots get a corner kick on that instance. Six minutes of stoppage time, and it nearly was enough for switchbacks to find a goal. And almost the same play we saw in minute one. Williams pushes in a bit deep. That makes Hackshaw drop in. Enriquez comes in, but straight at Paul Blanchett. And that's been the story of the first half for the switchbacks. Getting into good opportunities, but not making them count. Our halftime stats brought to you by Broadmoor Cryotherapy. As we look at the double the amount of shots for the switchbacks, and only one shot on target, that's all you need if you're Oakland. Efficiency, and that's something that Noah Delgado is gonna be very pleased about, but he's gonna want them to get more involved into that final third. With the attacking pieces that he has for Mela Palais need to come a bit more alive. Diaz and Tamakas join the attack fit, but I do think the key for the Roots is that two, that double pivot, Nane and Matsoso can't get caught up on the same plane. One pushes, one drops, and for the switchbacks, you need to get Williams more involved. He's been so good at breaking the line, but his first touch has been letting him down. Oh, Welcoming you back here to Widener Field, getting set for the second 45 minutes. The switchbacks and the roots on this Friday night. With Ricky Lopez Espin, I'm Josh Eastern. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. And this has been a good one thus far. Plenty of action back and forth we have gone. And now we'll see if the switchbacks can avoid a fifth straight loss. They haven't lost four straight since 2019. As they got the Sabres out tonight on Galactic Night here in Colorado Springs. Big one for the kids and all the Star Wars fans, if you will. Here we get one here up in the booth. And a substitution coming here at halftime as the whistle blows. False start. It is going to be Malik Foster coming on and replacing Romaria Williams. It was a bit of a tough first half for Williams. Just not clean enough. Getting into very good situations, but not making them count. Now you're going to see Foster. Different look going forward for the switchbacks. Williams is more as a target man, likes to play with his back towards goal. Foster has the ability to spin around and stretch the game. 
Again, having that give and take relationship between the front line for Stephen Hogan is going to be key in the second half. And that's this substitution brought to you by the William J. Hibble Sports Medicine and Performance Center. Learn more at hibblecenter.org. Here's Formel up. To look to play this up over the top. No results this year for Colorado Springs when they trail at halftime. Four losses while the Roots are unbeaten their last nine. They've won all nine of those games when they lead at halftime. That goes back to last June against New Mexico. And we'll see if they can hold on here. Going to play this in behind for Foster. This will be ushered all the way out of play. It's pretty impressive, though. Nine wins out of nine for Oakland when they have led at halftime. We just see the experience that's on the field, starting with that man right there. Will Hackshaw, Emmer Clavenza, and Danny Barbier within the back line. So compact and so good at picking and choosing their moments, when to play out, but also just when to clear their lines. They're a bit shaky in this first half, but since then, and put a foot wrong. Barbier looking for that ball over the top. And this will be kicked away there by Herrera. I believe Johnny Rodriguez is back wearing number 17 now. He's going to cut this one in. Again on the turn, Rodriguez blocked down. And it's out for a corner kick. Segrist blocking it out. Corner kick brought to you by McDivitt Law Firm. We are in your corner. Again, it's just a bit too easy. Enriquez, Segrist just gets split. Rodriguez does very well, but it's a recovery run here to not let this ball go across the face of a goal from Segrist. Enriquez just doing with confidence at the moment. Diaz ready to take this. Lofted in all the way to the back side. Collected by Formella. Now it's Clementa who slides it down the line. Rodriguez has to stand this up. It's blocked out by Lacroix. It's another corner kick coming. This corner kick is brought to you by Pikes Peak National Bank. Bank well, be well, cheer loud. Another chance for Diaz to swing this in. With depth on it, it's headed down but wide. Good opportunity there. Looks like Tamakas was close to it. The switchbacks have never lost to Oakland. A win and a draw last year it was a 1-1 home draw in September, and they got a 3-0 road win in the first ever match between these two sides. That was back at the end of April of last season. Enriquez going to play this into the corner, and again, it's out of play. Speedy Williams or Mahoney. Foster has to get it back from McGee, and this one cleared away once again. Once again, Josh, you just see one ball breaking the line between Matsoso and Joseph Nane. Foster pops off. Ideally, if you're Stephen Hogan, you want that to be McGee in the hole with Foster running off of it. In terms of spacing for the Oakland Roots, the center midfielder is just getting caught all over the field. All the way 
back for Blanchett. Just a bit too much by Echevarria. Echevarria again. Speedy Williams trying to play that through, but couldn't get it by Emre Clementa. Rodriguez was cut down, but play on. Again, there's that big pocket of space. You're just pointing at it. Here's McGee. McGee lofts this forward. Some contact there, but going down a bit too easy there is Malik Foster. I think he's been so good within this back line for the Oakland Roots. Hackshaw, and once again, it's Danny Barbier getting caught up a bit high, ball over the top. Nothing in there. But the ability to read the game, to close down the space, and reveal Hackshaw. What a massive pickup and acquisition he's been for the Oakland Roots. Oh, this is all the way in behind. Rodriguez still putting some pressure on Segrist. It'll take him all the way into the corner. Segrist gets this away, but it's out of play. It's just route one. Again, a bit easy for the Roots to get in behind this back line of the switchbacks. So it's defending one on one. If there's no pressure on the ball, you have to drop. Players at this level have the ability to hit a ball on a dime over 60, 70 yards. Seems both of these teams have elected for that route one ball quite a bit, or that ball right through the middle. Both midfields have let a few of those through. Just look at McGee in the, right there. Hackshaw steps forward again. He can get a clean touch. Having the overload right on top of that 18-yard box, there's a lot of room to operate in. Again, it goes back to Beckford. Wants to cross this one in. They go all the way through and bounces out. So how sloppy this switchback side has been in that final third. Whether it's a decision-making, whether it's a loose touch that gives time for the Oakland Roots to cover ground. Just be more crisp in that final third for the home side. And another opportunity that Hackshaw has to extinguish. Enriquez moves it down the line. The cross comes in. Blanchett may have missed that one. He got lucky, though, and it bounces right back to him. Yeah, nervy moments for the goalkeeper for the Roots. You come off your line, you have to make sure you're getting a play on this ball, any sort of contact, just misreads it. Like you said, off the back of Backford. Fortunate enough for Paul Blanchett, it could have been a big uh-oh moment. You never want those as a goalkeeper. I don't think you want them anywhere. No, fair <laughs> enough. Up here, tries to switch the point of attack. Space to utilize on the far side. It's Makas cutting this in. Ahead for Rodriguez. The return to Makas. Blocked down. There's a peel for handball in there, but this is cleared away. Brian Tamakas making things happen. This touch right here is just so good from Tamakas. It pulls off Enriquez because he can't make a play. And that pulls in Secrets, the give and go. First touch bobbles up, but again, it hits off Pelais. Who knows where that ball would end up? The back of the net, we'll take a look here. Oh yeah, surely. It's just so good, the recognition from the outside back. And now it's Beckford looking for the centering feed, and Hackshaw is there again. More defending to do, though, for Hackshaw. Beckford's cross. This is headed away by Barbier. Well, not much has changed from that first half. It's still back and forth. Fun for the neutrals. I'm sure both these coaches <laughs> not really enjoying Having it. a heart attack on the sideline. Okay, just a recognition of the players around you. I don't think on, people understand how critical that touch was from Tamakas to pull out Enriquez. And as he comes to the interior, Secrets has to engage with him. 
Rodriguez understands to peel out. So passage of play there for the Oakland Roots. Switchbacks. There's Beckford. You can see him trying to line that one up. It was always going to be an ambitious effort from that sort of distance and angle. Just comes to the center location once again for the switchbacks. Playing through the lines. Beckford does very well to peel out. And again, it's a very difficult angle to beat Paul Blanchett from that distance near post and needs to take something special. Those spots that McGee is picking up off the shoulder of Jose Nane. What do you do when you get on the ball in the half turn? That's been the big question mark that's been lacking for the switchbacks in terms of their success on the attacking side. Scott, he doesn't like what he's seen so far. <laughs> so so. And now it's Enriquez on the far side. Overlap available. Instead, this comes in for Scundrich. It's Planchette to come to claim it. And it's better from Paul Blanchett. We saw moments ago the indecisiveness from the goalkeeper. We did the whole way. Good ball. Here's Rodriguez. Hold play up. I think it's fair to say this game has deserved a goal. Maybe not in the fashion that it came, but very well taken by Johnny Rodriguez. Take nothing away from it. As this comes in again. There's an opportunity for Palaez in there. Diaz for Formella. Diaz serves again. Heads go up. Lacroix gets it away. Now it comes out to Masoso. Good touch. It's Formella. It's off the post. Rodriguez off the post. Diaz back for Johnny Rodriguez. Saved. That's straight out of a video game, and it stays out. We talk about the lack of intensity from this back line of the switchback, so pedestrian-like. No one closes down so much time and space for the Oka Roots. Formella does extremely well, uses the momentum against him, doesn't need to hit it too hard, and then Rodriguez just doesn't hit it flush. Ball bounces up, eyes for that near post, off the post, but what a big-time save that is for Herrera. Down to his right-hand side like a cat. But if you're the Oka Roots, how this ball does not end up in the back of the net is beyond me. It's a Pikes Peak National Bank corner kick. Think well, be loud, cheer loud. Here's the in swinger. Herrera comes to claim it. Again, Josh, you just see how passive the switchbacks were in that instance. Here come the switchbacks. Heavy touch by Beckford. Romella does well, tracking back defensively. Well, that goes back to what Noah Delgado has talked about. We mentioned it in the first half, getting that second goal so important. They were able to get it last week against San Diego, win that game 2-0. That's something that Noah Delgado has really liked. The five shutouts this year that is tied for second in the USL Championship, just one behind Sacramento Republic with six. When you think of good teams, it usually starts on that end of the field. The ability to close out games in the USL Championship is just so important. You go up but a goal, so what does this look like in terms of the tactics? Do you go for that second or do you park the bus? Are you talking to Noah Delgado, like you said, Josh, he wants that second goal. He wants to get his players involved in that final third. And moments ago, they should have had it. Well, in a game like this, if you're sitting in, you're inviting pressure, and switchbacks have provided plenty of that in this game. Nine shots, two of them on target. And still just one on target for Oakland after they now have hit the woodwork twice. Mane, loose pass there in the middle, and now it's a foul. And this will go the way of Colorado Springs. Menta, who's slow to get back to his feet. If 
capitalizing on opportunities for the Oaken Roots. But again, if you're Stephen Hogan, you're going to look around and say, where's the intensity in terms of closing down space? So pedestrian, like so many players on their heels. So fortunate for them. The best friend of Herrera, not once but twice, comes to, <laughs> to save the day. And then this is a massive save. Down to his right-hand side, Johnny Rodriguez hits it clean. You can't say that on the first instance. No, God is going to look up to the skies and say, what else do we need to do to have that second goal? And just a half hour to go, and switchbacks continue to search. Skundrich. Shapes the cross in, and this one headed away by Tamakas. And this will be out of play for a corner kick brought to you by Pepsi. Pepsi, that's what I like. And you're seeing the switchbacks just pump a lot more balls into dangerous areas, testing the shape of the open roots. And so far, answered every single question. Here comes the service. Blanchett looks like he may have slipped there, but he'll get bailed out by this going all the way out of play. 51 final third entries for the home side. 24 touches in the box, zero goals. Just tells you the lack of efficiency for the home side, getting very well, doing very well to get to that final third. But again, it's that theme that Stephen Hogan's been talking about, the ability to finish off plays. That's something that has been lacking for the home side here. Well, the USL on ESPN continues as the summer heats up. Memphis 901 FC and Aaron Malloy head to the Valley of the Sun to face Manuel Arteaga and Phoenix Rising. It's Phoenix Rising in Memphis 901 Saturday, July 1st, 11 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. Cross blocked down. It's moved along. Diaz pushed away. Herrera with a fine stop. Great technique on the shot, though, by Diaz to even put that on frame. Formella. Another foul, and this will be a free kick. Tamakas forcing the issue in the second half. But it's that first touch once again that crosses Enriquez and puts him in a very tricky situation. We'll take a look at this opportunity for Memo Diaz. His ball falls extremely kind to him. It's a lot of technique. You have to have the balance leaning away from the ball to use the momentum to your favor. You hit it so clean, but once again, Herrera, big time save between the sticks for the switchbacks. Substitution coming, Anwar Palaez will be coming off. It's Lindo Mafeka coming on. Two goals and an assist so far this year for the South African. He had a team high four assists a couple of years ago, trying to return to that form as this substitution is brought to you by the William J. Hibble Sports Medicine and Performance Center. Learn more at hibblecenter.org. And it's going to change the tactics for Nero Delgado. Johnny Rodriguez, he's going to stay high now. And then you have Formella and Mafeka underneath him. Beck is going to have a lot of joy playing in between lines for the remainder of this second half. Here he is. Moving out wide for Diaz. Diaz. No deflection on it, just straight out of play. And back onto the field. Can you just see the gaps between the lines of the roots? So if you're McGee and you can play centrally, there's so much real estate to operate in. And that's interesting because Noah Delgado talked about forcing players wide. You leave all that space <laughs> in the middle. Not necessarily how he wants it to shake out. You can just see Henriquez is playing off the shoulder. Joseph Nane peeking over his shoulder. Skundrich for Beckford. Out of play. Tyree 
Tariq McGee and Jairo Enriquez will be coming off. It's going to be Jay Chapman, the 29-year-old Canadian international to come on along with the youngster Marcos Rios, the 16-year-old from Pueblo, Colorado. His second pro appearance here in the USL Championship. William J. Hibble, Sports Medicine and Performance Center substitution. First two, or two of the first three of the night. Now for Colorado Springs, they've used it in one moment. The relationship between Speedy Williams and Jay Chapman now for the switchbacks. Jay Chapman has a very good feel of when to advance in that final third and can pick out a pass. Technical ability is passing range. The reading of the game is going to be critical to finding the equalizer for the home side. Rios as well. How quick can he play up to speed in this match? He's going to play on the left hand side, so that's going to push an edge of Rio. Essentially, to try to overload a channel for the switchbacks. Hackshaw long over the top. It's Diaz again for Mella. Centering feed, Lindo Mafeka for Masoso. Makas tries to cut this in. Moved across again for Diaz. Mafeka for Masoso. Over hits the cross, but it comes off anyway for Diaz. Diaz serves it right back in and Switchback's just about able to get this out, and Beckford will motor away. Using that speed to move down the line. Tries to cut it in field on Joseph Nane, who had it red all the way. Terrific work from the veteran Joseph Nane. Now Oakland trying to play out of some switchback's pressure. Beer showing the techers. <laughs> Speedy Williams. Segrist in field. Chapman trying to keep it moving. There was nobody there. Switchbacks will keep it with Beckford. Beckford all the way across and bouncing out of play. But those are the spots that you want Jay Chapman to pick up the ball. 25 yards in. It's a good idea just to help it on, but just not on the same page between him and Echeverria. Echeverria thinks he's going to Start in between this back line to play in. Shea Chapman looks for the wall pass. Lanchette will put this back in play. We're calling Paul the wall for a reason. He's been great tonight. Maybe not necessarily stopping a ton of shots, just two shots on target. And he's come to claim some crosses, organize the back line very well. As Chapman drives this forward, there's Blanchett again. If you can't watch the match, you're on Sirius XM 157. North America's only 24-7 source for engaging soccer talk. Hear live matches from the USL, MLS, English Premier League, and more all on Sirius XM FC 157 and the SXM app. 20 minutes to go tonight from Widener Fields. Colorado Springs hoping to avoid a fifth straight loss. And Oakland looking for a fourth win in the last five games. Be a great stretch to vault them up the Western Conference standings. And of course, without Eduardo Rito tonight. Looks like the flag stays down for now. And it's an opportunity for two. It's for Mellon. 
wide, and Herrera just getting something on that. It's out for a corner. Just quick around the corner for the Oakland Roots. Around a standing midfield third for the switchbacks once again. As this ball gets by Speedy Williams, it's just pure effort between him and Rios. Rodriguez just wants it more. Formella times his run to perfection, but then if he goes near post, I think he has a far better angle just to slot this through. Tries to go across his body. Big time save from Herrera. The kick save to make himself big. And he's single-handedly keeping this switchback side into this game. It's a Pikes Peak National Bank corner kick that was cleared away. Bank well, be well, cheer loud. Big believer, once you get to that final third and you go across your body, you give the vision to the goalkeeper to make and read the shot. I think if Formella just opens up his hips and slots it to that near post, the better angle to find the back of the net there. But once again, Herrera, top class in his saves time after time. Segrist, nice play back, Echeverria. Speedy Williams, lofting it forward. Spendridge couldn't get there, Foster will. Lofting it in again, Chapman. And chase it down, it runs out of play. Shouts for it. offside here on Derek Formella, but he holds his run. Look at the bottom of your screen, Mahoney keeps him onside. It's right there. Picture perfect, reading the line. That's how you time your run if you're Formella. Talking about the willingness to get on the end of it from Johnny Rodriguez. That extra effort makes a massive difference. Just beats Speedy Williams, beats Rios the center of the park. That's been the story of the night for the Oakland Roots, just taking their chances and putting pressure on the back line of the switchbacks. Here's Mahoney. For Skundrich. Peanut Gallery wants their say here tonight with 17 <laughs> minutes to go. Mahoney. Move down the line, Skundrich to serve. Bounces all the way through. Maybe appeals for handball. This stays alive. Chance to hit this. Williams just kind of helped it along and now he'll chase it down and Keep it for the switchbacks. He just rushes the issue there, Speedy Williams. Has more time than he thinks to collect this ball. Get a clear shot on target. And to roll this in, Foster. Tried something fancy, but he was offside anyway. Seacrest has been terrific with this service from a deep blank position just around the corner of this back line. You have to give credit. To Emmer Clementa, Neville Hackshaw, Danny Barbier, the back three for the Oakland Roots, stepping in unison, catching. Malik Foster off line, offside. Formella. With a win tonight, Oakland would jump over Colorado Springs in the fifth spot. These two teams would just switch places. They would also go level on points with San Diego, even on games played. Obviously still a very long way to go, but through 12 games, significant for this Oakland team to be right in the thick of things, especially their first year in the league. They had to come from behind, try to get back into it. Last year, a little bit of the same. And this year, they're trying to get out in front of it and be comfortable when it comes to September, October, and crunch time in the playoffs. 
then you ask every single coach, yes, you want to get wins, but what's your reaction after the wins? How can you follow up that performance? You welcome a very good San Diego loyal side. Off the heels of going to Miami, picking up three points, so you know they were going to be full of confidence on the road once again. You blank them 2-0, and then you come into this hostile environment. Yes, there's 15 plus minutes left. So far, no, the God needs to be very pleased with the effort and the structure from his side. Echevarria. Chapman, driven ball in. Let's go up. Seeger's trying to keep it alive. Rios couldn't make anything happen. The referee will stop play here. Head injury. That is Tamakas, who I believe is down. There's no need for this. Somebody lost their saber, Ricky. That's what you're going to call it. You can see Beckford just telling the faithful, we don't need any of that as his ball comes across. Seekers just hashes to Marcus. No ill will, just a reaction. The back end of it to Marcus very dangerously goes down. Hopefully he's OK to keep on going for the roots. This injury stoppage brought to you by Centura Health. And a substitution. This no doubt an attack-minded substitution for Stephen Hogan. Taking off Speedy Williams and bringing on Aaron Wheeler. to William J. Hibble Sports Medicine Performance Center substitution. When you talked about attack-minded. Wheeler, he's going to stay high. And he's going to occupy Hawkshaw, Farbier, and Clemenza. So now you have Malik Foster. Beckford, Chapman, Echeverria running off of him. A focal point to play into. Everything okay down there with the supporters group. We saw one of those Sabres come onto the field. I think they're trying to find the individual and might be escorted from the premises here. No reason to throw anything at anybody, especially when they're down injured. And this is what happened here. I mean, that is, that is bad. Just no need. There was a substitution there. We mentioned Wheeler coming on. He did score four goals a year ago. This year he has been used in every appearance he's made off the bench, 10 of them previous to tonight. We'll see what he can provide. Last time he scored was in the 3-0 win over RGV. He scored a couple in that game, the playoff game. Gundrich. Cross comes in. The heads go up. Flicked along. Beckford for Segrist, who delivers. The header's down. It's still loose. Rios, what a chance. The whistle comes to stop play with Hackshaw down. Oh, the 16-year-old had a great chance to bring us level. His name in headlights once again. Seacrest, the ball, very dangerous area. Wheeler just draws in Hackshaw. Dear Lord, the 16-year-old gets a bit too eager. His eyes open a bit wide, just takes his eye off the ball, mistimes his jump. Once again, what a brilliant opportunity this is for the switchbacks to find their opening goal.
Ten minutes left. You just see the insertion of Wheeler, how much attention he requires. So if you have a secondary action, a player playing off of his shoulder, whether it's coming underneath, whether it's stretching it behind, that's what a player, a target man brings you. This team has been shut out three times this year. Two of those games have been 1-0 losses. The other was a 4-0 loss at the hands of Sacramento on the road. It was nearly a month and a half ago. Chapman switches the point of attack. Great ball out wide, and here come the switchbacks in Beckford. To Shane Beckford, tries to turn the corner. Cross comes in, it's Wheeler. Trying to sort his feet. It's Segris now, down the line. Beckford, and the flag is up for offside. I had a feeling it was coming. And again, all those numbers there for the switchbacks and not able to make it happen. As this ball comes back to Patrick Seegers, just look at the bottom of your screen, Danny Barbier. Oh, it's very close. close. See if he, he keeps Beckford on. He understands he's getting caught. He makes that secondary action right at the whistle. I think there is an argument to be had for the switchbacks. Again, just the lack of that clean first touch from Wheeler. Great ball in from Beckford. The cutback, that's so efficient. The strikers for switchbacks just not clean enough in around that 18 yard box on the night. Well, that's been a common theme here for Colorado Springs. It's just that that final ball at the moment just isn't quite happening for them. Talked with Stephen Hogan this week and said we just need to take our chances better. So a lot of finishing and training this week. Young fans hoping they can get it done. That's a great kit there too. And also, it's the switchback's color, so it works perfect. You'd love to see it, the passion. Another foul, Maselso going down. You mentioned it's been since 2019 since the switchbacks have lost four straight games. Lost three straight on a few occasions. to make it five. Here's Foster. He went down. And now the referee will blow his whistle. Curious what decision's going to be here. And Lindo Mafeka will have his name taken. Bit of a late whistle here as Memo Diaz clearly takes out Malik Foster as he points to the ball and it's Ludlum Mafeka the action after the whistle kicked the ball away sees him going to the book now he's drawing at Jay Chapman looking for quality here if you're Chapman just to lace this ball in right around that penalty mark between the 18 to ask questions of the shape of Pablo and Chen cause chaos within the back line of the Oakland Roots. It's a brilliant opportunity, brilliant distance to put a lot of pace on it and backspin on this ball. This is brought to you by Underline, delivering gigabit fiber internet. Chapman it wasn't the service they were looking for. It forward again and headed clear. Back through the middle. Segrist. There's Rios. Segrist gets the cross away. Blanchett comes to claim it. Brave goalkeeping there. Decisive as well. That's all you can ask for for your goalkeeper. 
Turns off his line about 13, 14 yards out. You love to see it, Bob Blanchett. He's been so massive time after time for the Roots. It's been over 20 minutes since a shot for Oakland in this game, but they have the goal. And they are content with that. Their expected goals almost 0.6 better than Colorado Springs. 1.11 to 0.48 in this game. Echeverria continues his run. Clemente there to get it away. They're now trying to urge their side on here. This one cleared away again. It's going to be a Pepsi corner kick. Pepsi, that's what I like. Play it short, and they'll get it again. Another Pepsi corner kick. Chapman ready to deliver. In swinger. Fecca thump this away. A souvenir for a fan on the concourse. This comes in again on the turn. Wheeler has it blocked. And Oakland's will get this away. They're saying at this point, let's hold what we have. Two minutes plus stoppage to go. Long switch of play. We got the last touch. It's another corner kick. It's presented by Pepsi. Pepsi, that's what I like. And it's Johnny Rodriguez who is down. I believe this substitution is for him. They have 76 up on the board. That's what he wore in the first half. They were able to get him a clean jersey here in the second half. And now he'll be coming off. And it is going to be Tarek Morad coming on. Third and final substitution of the night as no one thought has used all three windows. Injury stoppage brought to you by Centura Health. Rodriguez now getting back to his feet and it's going to be coming off. Well, he comes off, but he was the difference in this game. But again, you just see the lack of pressing. Yes, Duke, Laquan, Patrick, Zeker step off their line, but they don't engage. They don't close down the space. We talked about it, but striker is in form. They're going to be ooing with confidence. Half chance. Back of the net, Oakland have their goal in the first half out of nothing. So William J. Hibble, Sports Medicine and Performance Center substitution. Now the Pepsi corner kick. The in-swinger. Heads go up. That was last off the switchbacks as we are in a five minutes of stoppage time presented by TikTok Shop. This is probably one of those games where for Oakland, it's going slow. 
the switchbacks. It's going to be a quick five minutes. Now you're looking, if you know Delgado, to win your individual battles, because you know what the switchbacks are going to pump in a lot of balls into the box with the insertion of and Wheeler, the physical aerial presence that he possesses. So again, if one center back steps up to engage, the other three need to pinch in in behind, going into a back five, trying to see this game out. It's all about character, all about discipline and grit now for the Oakland Roots. And then for the switchbacks, once you get into these situations just like this. Skundrich lofts it forward, Blanchett bobbles, but collects. How decisive and clean can you be? Picking out dark jerseys. Off the balls like this give Paul Blanchett the ability to step off his line. And how good has he been at reading the flight of the ball? Still time on the clock for the switchbacks to pick and choose at times when to combine, but when to play direct also. There's going to be space right in front of that back five. So looking at a player like Jay Chapman to get on the half turn with the willing runners. But again, how the decisions and how clean can you be once you get to that final third? As your approach last three plus minutes here for the home side. It's interesting, this Colorado Springs side, they scored 59 goals last year. That was good for second in the Western Conference. And yet they were shut out nine times. Nine and 34 regular season games. Trying to avoid that here tonight. As this cross fired in. Tamakas, look at a goal kick out of it. It's looking grim here for Colorado Springs. Well, Herrera has kept this at 1-0 for quite a while. Letting it done between the sticks because it easily been 2-0, 3-0 for the Roots, but time after time, big time save after big time save. That one's probably the most impressive, the kick save. As Romela closes his hips at the last second. A timely, massive performance for Herrera. Did spend some time with Oakland Roots, did Christian Herrera. Also time with OCB, Portland 2, Real Monarchs, Tacoma Defiance. It's ball lofted forward and too much looking for Foster. Two minutes to go. Diaz right through the middle for Mella. And they really put this away for good. It's Lindo Mafeka, and it's saved again. Boy, Herrera keeping Colorado Springs in this game. Now can they go on and find an equalizer? 75 seconds to go. Once again, what a massive save from Christian Herrera. Trying to cut this in. Back for dispossessed, sliding challenge by Echeverria. Good recognition here from Derek Vermilla just to let this play develop. And then you have Lindo Mafeka. This is where you want him inside that 18 yard box, but it's his least preferred right foot. Doesn't hit it as cleanly as he would like. It's a brilliant first touch. Once again, cat like reflexes down to his right hand side for Herrera to keep this thing 1-0. Last roll of the dice here. And that is it. The Oakland Roots come on the road and they hand the switchbacks a fifth straight loss. A massive three points for the Roots. Johnny Rodriguez gets the lone goal and that's enough for Oakland to go back to the Bay with all three. And you beat San Diego at home, but how do you turn one win into two for the Oakland Roots? That man pulling a cat out of a hat. Half opportunity, that's all he needs when a striker is confident. 
Talk about the grit, you talk about the camaraderie, you talk about the, the togetherness for the Oakland Roots to come into Colorado Springs, hostile environment, explosive and attacking unit, and to blank them and to get your goal on the road. What a terrific result this is for the Oakland Roots. Well, it's time for the critical moment of the match. It is brought to you by Centura Health, and Christian Herrera had to make some big saves in this game. And he was keeping this thing alive, save after save. It's probably a Brilliant one once again. Memo Diaz hits it so clean, but this is just fantastic reaction to make himself big, kick safe. And he's been, he was massive between the 6 4. The switchbacks in the home side. Another massive save as Linda Mafeka breaks in between that back line. Down to his right hand side. Just a terrific performance from that young man. Well, the votes are in. The better Business Bureau man of the match is Christian Herrera. Read verified customer reviews and check business ratings at bbb.org. Well, a tough one to take for the switchback tonight. That is now five straight losses, but the Oakland Roots, they will take these three points back to the town, and they will keep on moving along. Up to 20 points now on this young USL Championship season. We'll come back and wrap things up. The final score brought to you by SoCo CW is Oakland 1, Colorado Springs nil. Stay with us. Burgers for the mind, tacos for the heart, and chili for the soul. We're Felipe's 109, home of the Taco Burger. Local flavors, family owned, Love, peace, green chili, y'all. Ready for a race? It all starts June 11th at 7 a.m. The Garden of the Gods 10-mile, 10 10K, 10 and trail run. Bring your friends and family to the post-race expo. Enjoy the stunning scenery, vendor booths, food and drinks. For event times, go to garden10mile.com. At Fox 21, we say we are Southern Colorado, but what does that really mean? It means we bring you the local stories from our towns, our people, with stories that show how you live, work, and play. Plus the stories that impact our communities. We want to tell the stories that are important to you because, because we, we are, are Southern Colorado. Colorado. Watch Fox 21 local news weekday mornings from 5 to 9 a.m. and weeknights at 5, 6, 39 and 10. Here at Fox 21 local news, because we are Southern Colorado, we want to highlight the best of Southern Colorado. Fox 21 and SoCo CW are launching our very own best of the best Southern Colorado campaign. And now it's your chance to nominate your favorite businesses. Scan the QR code on screen now to nominate your favorites in one of four regions for their chance to be named best of the best of Southern Colorado. Plus, you could win a $250 Visa gift card just for taking part. Let's hear it, Southern Colorado. Who is the best of the best? Back to wrap things up tonight from Colorado Springs. Final score is brought to you by Soco CW. It is Oakland 1. Colorado Springs nil, our full-time highlights. Also brought to you by Soco CW as we look back at this one. And boy, we start in the 12th minute. This is when things got started for Oakland in a big way. Just a recognition of space here from Johnny Rodriguez. A little peek over his shoulder. Understands no one's gonna step off my line. Why don't I just pull the trigger? Never needs a second invitation. Kisses off that far post and trickles into the back of the net. But again, the Oakland Roots. Asking Noah Delgado, how do you turn one goal into two goals? You just see the lack of defending for here for the switchback. So many players on their heels, so many players watching. And how this ball does not end up in the back of the net for two bites of the apple for John Rodriguez. But what a massive save at the end of this thing was for Christian Herrera. But that's one post, that's two posts. And then the reaction this is the third save for Herrera. What a magnificent performance between the sticks for the Colorado Springs goalkeeper. 63rd minute and the chances would keep on coming and another great opportunity. This one pushed away though. Going back the other way in transition moments for the Oakland Roots was the best opportunity to catch out the switchbacks. Once again, brilliant understanding and just the extra effort from John Rodriguez. Formella breaks in, gets in behind this back line. With that man once again, what a terrific kick save this is. Makes himself extremely big and puts it out for a corner kick. And then we get into stoppage time, and there's one more opportunity here for Oakland. Yeah, you, you know, Delgado, you're going to scratch your head how you don't have this second goal 2 nil on the road. The answer is Christian Herrera. Linda Mefeka, his least preferred right foot, probably didn't hit it as cleanly as he would like, but takes nothing away from the save from that man. 
Our stats presented by the Better Business Bureau, and the stats were, well, there were a lot of shots in this game. Switchbacks had the possession, but Oakland got the goal. But again, two shots on target for Stephen Hogan. That's something that he mentioned to us on our phone call. How do we give up opportunities and not take ours? That was the story of the match. How many times did we see the switchback get to the final third, but the decision-making, the quality, the efficiency was lacking, and they lose five in the row. So again, what's your reaction look like for Stephen Hogan next time they're on the field? And you want to see him motivated. You want to see that first opening goal within the first 15 minutes to see the floodgates open on for the attacking unit. Well, that will do it for our coverage tonight from Colorado Springs. The switchbacks, they were hoping to come home and end the losing streak, but Oakland had other ideas. They get their league-leading sixth clean sheet and another three points in the back. For our entire crew and broadcast partner, Ricky Lopez-Espin, I'm Josh Eastern saying so long from Colorado Springs, where Oakland is victorious. Good night from Colorado Springs. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.